This video is on how to do a little bit more advanced troubleshooting of 3D scans. So this is a scan of a piece of bamboo, a plant, in my office. And it got a lot of my office and obviously the thing that I was photographing, the bamboo. So just like in the other video, we're going to start off by doing some plain cuts across. If you get the wrong one, you hit this little arrow to flip it just to kind of whittle down the selection to be something a little bit more manageable. You certainly could just select the plant in the center and then invert it, but I like doing this because I just like to kind of get a 3D feel of what my object is and where it is in space. So with just four plain cuts here, I have a pretty good isolation of this bamboo. So I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to go into analysis to inspector to see if there's anything wrong I didn't know. So we do have some issues here. We have an open boundary, which is fine. We can fix that later on. We also have a red pin here, which is an open boundary that's hard for Mesh Mixer to figure out how to fix. So we'll deal with that. And then we have some disconnected objects up here. So let's highlight this by pressing the C key with the mouse over it and zoom in and take a look at what these are. Okay, so some little floating leaves. I don't really need those. So I'm going to click on those to delete the pink ones. This red one we can't fix by clicking on, and the blue one is the open boundary of this flat model. So we can't fix that automatically either. We click Done. Now I'm going to go into the Mesh Mixer shader mode just so that we can see things better. So these are all front faces. We have some back faces back here. That's fine. So I certainly could just go in and plain cut under Edit to Plain Cut. I could just cut the vase right here and flip it and accept it. And we would have a nice flat base. But what if I want all of the pot? I don't want to plain cut any of that away. I could certainly try to go down and see where it would hit. But unless your plane is absolutely perfect, you're going to start cutting some things away and some not. In this case, this would probably work because if I say accept, I'm left with this, but this is very, very easy to go and select and get rid of. But let's say I want to be very, very exacting. The way that you're very, very exacting is also similar to the way that you would fix this shape. So if the, you have a jagged shape like this, a good way to try is to go into select with a small brush and double click as close as you can to that blue line. What that will do is select the entire boundary. And normally you would go in and say, great, it's selected, go into edit, and you would use maybe some of these tools, maybe some of the bridge tools uh, or remeshing tools to try to get this to work. But what we're going to try to do inside of here is we're going to modify the selection to be a smooth boundary. So this is very, very jagged right now. So we can try and it doesn't work. And what this means is this kind of magenta area right here is there's no boundary selection to smooth because of this little pinch right here. It can't smooth through that one little area. So what I'm going to do is hold my control button down and go and try to deselect that one area. But you notice that I can't deselect it enough. And now this other boundary is unselected. So the best thing to do in this is just to go out, go into the select tool and select maybe a couple of triangles to delete. And now when we double click on this boundary, Mesh Mixer will have a better idea on how to fill it. We still may run into a problem, but let's see. We go to Modify to Smooth Boundary, and Mesh Mixer does have a problem here because this selection is touching this selection, and it doesn't like that. So what we can do is just cancel that out. We can't get rid of this triangle because it is touching that one. So it's kind of an advanced thing. 
if you needed to get a little bit more definition in this area, what you can do is go into Select, double click on that, and go to Edit to Remesh. And it shows another area right there where it's having a problem remeshing. So we click Cancel, and we're just going to select those triangles as well. Now go back up to Edit and Remesh. And I have it set to linear subdivision. So what this will do is it will just divide the triangles more and more. It won't actually change any of the topology, but it'll just divide them more and more. You certainly can try relative or adaptive. Those can work too. Linear subdivision really, really doesn't change any of it, any of the triangles that are already there. It just makes them more complex, which is good uh, because you're not losing any definition, but you get this very messy mesh. But that's actually okay for this purpose. So I'm going to click, click Accept. So now we have a very dense mesh on here. I'm going to go into Select, double click as close as I can to that blue line, and it's selected some. We can say Modify to Optimize, and that optimizes it. And then we go Modify to Smooth. And now we say accept, and we get a very nice smooth selection that we can now go to edit and erase and fill. And you can choose smooth or flat remeshed, see how either one of those looks. I'm just going to go to smooth. It goes in a little bit, as you can see right here. But you can also bulge it out a little bit to make it not go in, and say accept. And that's just a face group left over. And now that is completely fixed. So we're going to use a similar technique on the bottom. We're going to go here to Select. And I'm going to make my mouse a little bit larger. And I'm going to turn the crease angle up. So what this does is it prevents the selection from going up at too much of an angle. So what this does is, is it selects fine. These are all at the same angle. But as we hit the bottom of the pot, you see the selection is not going as quickly up as it normally would. I'll show you a little bit more powerful version of that. So crease angle at 89. You see I'm selecting, great. But then we get to the bottom of this pot and it's not selecting that at all. You see that the shadow is traveling up the side, but it's not actually going up. It's actually not selecting these at the bottom because these right down here are at a little bit of an angle and I might want to select those. So I might want to turn this down a little bit and now as we go around we're selecting those but now see it's not going up the side of the pot as quickly as it was before. So this allows us to go very, very quickly around the bottom of this pot and select triangles without going too much up it. That's great. So that's a pretty good, I might have gone a little bit and up here, but I wasn't those. doing it too quickly. So to get rid of this plane, we can click on anywhere on here and say Modify, Expand to Connected. So everything touching that selection will be selected. I'm going to hit Delete. Go to Analysis to Inspector to see if there's any little floating ones, which it looks like there are. A couple little pieces that I forgot to get right there. And then Done. So now I can work on the bottom part of this object. This is a pretty good line. It gets a little bit jagged right there and very, very jagged right there. So in order to clean this up, I might want to select with a smaller brush just this area right here and delete it. I'm going to select this area and delete it and maybe this one right here and delete it. I'm going to double click on this and do the same thing as we did before. I'm going to go up here to auto, uh, to modify, optimize, to optimize it, and then modify smooth. 
So we have kind of a nice smooth boundary now. And again, this is pretty advanced things, but sometimes you really do inside of scans need to go in and really, really get your hands dirty with uh, fixing scans. So I'm going to clear this selection now. And I'm going to go into the Sculpt tool under Volume and Drag. And what this does is it's going to drag, and we want to be able to have this area here at the same level as all these others. If we filled it right now, it would be a very bad type of fill. So I'm going to turn the strength up a little bit, the size up a little bit more, make sure that I don't have any filters turned on. And under refinement, I am going to refine and do a good amount of reduction. So what this does is we want to make sure that we are at a 90 degree view to what we want to drag. If we were like this and dragged, it would drag outwards. And we don't want that. So we want to look and we want to drag this downwards like this. So now if we look from the side, it is pretty much parallel to the other sides. So that is great. I'm going to drag this a little bit here. And what dragging, just touching it here, creates a mesh of similar density because we're going to be using the bridge tool. And I'm just going to click. Oops, I kind of lost my, lost my view there. I'm going to click right here just once. So I dragged it a little bit, but it did the refinement command to add more triangles in there. I'm going to make my mouse a little bit smaller, select a bit right here, and go to Edit to Bridge. Oops, sorry, I needed the other side of the bridge. Go here, then to Edit and Bridge. So that's a nice bridge there. I'm going to clear the selection, go back into the Select tool, select the other part of the bridge. So this side will be one part of the bridge, and this side will be another. That might be at too much of an angle. We'll see. Not too much. And click Accept. So that's great. I have two holes here, but those are very easily filled. If I click Select, double click on that boundary, click the F key for Fill. That one's filled. Double click on this boundary, click the F key for Fill. There's that boundary. And now the bottom of this is much more even. I can double clear selection, go back in and double click on this boundary and press the F key. And choose the one that looks best to you. I'm just going to do flat remeshed. And we have a nice, almost flat bottom. Now you can go use any of the tools, the flatten tools, the plain cut tools here. I'm just going to go into plain cut, rotate till I see just the bottom there, and exit this over and do that. So I didn't have to do the plain cut if I really wanted to keep that or, or sculpt with it a little bit more, but that teaches you about the bridge tool. It teaches you about using the sculpt tools to do dragging to create bridges themselves, which can then be used with the bridge tool to do a little bit of scan cleanup on your object. Also note that these tools, I'll turn off wireframe, tried to do the best with keeping the color there. And Mesh Mixer is an excellent tool that is kind of unique in, in that it fills in color where it thinks color should go. A lot of other tools out there would just delete the color and you would have blank blobs in there. So this is nice that it tries to do it as best it can. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is printability. If you were trying to print this in color, you certainly could, but there would be some issues. So if we go into analysis to thickness, the mesh will be analyzed for how thick it is, and you can say a minimum thickness. If you want to print this in color, a good number that I use is about three millimeters. So I'm going to type in three, press enter. Mesh Mixer will show me any areas that are thinner than three. So this ball here shows if I click this, the entire model pops up. So why did that happen? Well, if we go here to analysis to units and dimensions, 
we see that this is about 18 millimeters tall, right here, the Y, but only about 5 millimeters in the Z. So this might not actually be the right size for your needs for 3D printing. So if we change this maybe to 7 millimeters in the Z, everything else will update. We can go back into analysis to thickness to see any issues. And now we have a lot more specific suggestions that Mesh Mixer gives. There's an area down here, so pieces in this, probably the ridge right here, are less than three millimeters, so you might have some issues there. Um, the nice thing is that when you click those buttons, this those buttons, this becomes a selection which you can go and modify and say create face group on, which you won't see unless you're in mesh mixer mode. And now you can go in and select this face group and just work on that to make it maybe a little bit thicker. Also, we have some places here that are way, way too thin that we can go in with the sculpt tool, maybe do some inflation on them. You know, very slight inflations on these so that they meet printability guidelines for, in this case, color 3D printing, which is not very accurate at all. And then you would run the tools again. Now, obviously, I've created some issues, as with most uses of the inflate tool. You see there's an issue right here with a back face. You can go in to sculpt to a robust smooth and start kind of smoothing that out a little bit. And generally, this model would now be printable. So using the bridge commands and the select commands are really good techniques to help clean up more difficult prints.